In this video, I want to introduce a tool that completely changes the way you use AI coding tools like Cursor or Winsurf, potentially helping you save hundreds of hours of time and millions of credits or let's say tokens. So if you're someone who uses AI coding tools like Cursor or Winsurf, then you might have already probably experienced something very frustrating. That is, they have a memory of a goldfish. These tools hallucinate, repeat the exact same mistakes again and again, forget your project structure and architecture and even the basic context even when you're working on the same project. So what if we could go ahead and add a dedicated memory layer? One that sits between you and your AI agent, quietly remembering pretty much everything that matters the most. Your past code, architecture decision, bug fixes, project goals, all of them captured, organized and ready to be recalled exactly when you need them the most. Well, that's exactly what Byte Rover does. Byte Rover is built for developers who use AI coding tools like Cursor, Windsurf, Cloud, etc. and are tired of repeating themselves. It automatically captures the most important interactions between you and your agent like the code snippets, problem solving steps and feedback loops and organizes them into searchable and shareable memory. You can think of it like a second brain for your AI where every decisions, every bug fixes and every breakthrough can be remembered and recalled whenever you want to instantly, not just by you but your entire team. And now let me quickly go ahead and jump out to my computer screen and show you Byte Rover in action. So let's quickly get started. So this right here is Byte Rover and this is the tool that I've been talking about. So it says central intelligence for your coding agents and Byte Rover is a self-improving memory layer for your AI coding agents that creates, retrieve, share wipe coding memories across your project and teams. And now to quickly get started, all you're going to do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to the official website of Byte Rover, which is byterover.dev. And now if you go through their website, you'll quickly realize that you can access and use Byte Rover on pretty much all leading AI coding tools like Cursor, Winsurf, Copilot, Cloud, Client, Rucode, and even Z. And now if you want to learn more about the platform and what it can do, you can simply go ahead and scroll through and find all this. And now to quickly get started, I'll click on this get started button. And if this is your first time, go ahead and create a new account. And now once you sign up, initially, you'll be asked to create an organization. So a pop-up, something like this will appear. You can put in an organization name and click on this create organization option. And you can go ahead and create a new organization. So in my case, here I have already created an organization called Astro KJ. And now after creating an organization, next step, you need to create a memory workspace. So, I mean, initially when you create an organization, you'll be prompted to create a new memory workspace. You can also click this button right here to create a memory workspace as well. You can go ahead and give it a name and take it up from there. So here I have already created the memory workspace as well. I mean, this is the basic setup that you have to do right within their Byte Rover website. And now if you head over to this quick start section right here, you'll be able to find the guide to add Byte Rover into your IDE, whether it's Winsurf, Cloud, or let's say Cursor or any other. So to show you the flow, what I'll do is I'll head over and create a new memory workspace. Let's say Astro Demo, yeah, and I'll click on create. And now it will take you to a page something like this. And the first thing that you got to do is to choose your agent. So in this case, I'm using Cursor. So if you're using Winsurf, Copilot, Cloud Code, Client or Rook Code, you can select it from here. So all you got to do is to click on Cursor. And next step, you need to configure the Byte Rover extension on Cursor. So it's pretty simple. You just go ahead and click on this button right here and click on this open Cursor button. And it will now open Cursor and ask you the permission for installing the Byte Rover extension. So simply click on this open button. So in this case, I've already done that. And that's pretty much all that you have to do. And if you open Cursor, and if I head over to this uh, section and select Byte Rover, make sure you're authenticated. So if you find this option, it means Byte Rover is authenticated and it's ready to roll. And this is pretty much all that you have to do. So now on Byte Rover will be in action every time you use Cursor without you having to manually do anything. So I'll quickly go ahead and jump on to my uh, workspace that I've been working on. So this right here. So in this case, as you can see, it says you have already completed Quick Start with Byte Rover and it is active in Cursor. And now if I head over to this memory section right here, I'll be able to find all the memory that the AI has stored so far. But before that, let me actually show you how it works. So this right here is a simple voice transcription app. So let me quickly go ahead and open it up. Okay. So as I click on this microphone and whatever stuff that I speak will automatically get filled in here. As you can see, whatever stuff that I speak, it gets filled in here. And if I click on the speak button right here. The stuff that I speak would automatically get filled in here. 
the browser will talk or let's say speak it you can copy it and clear this as well another interesting part is that i just went ahead and gave a simple prompt something like this and it says i want to create a voice transcription app where users can click the button on the screen speak something and our website transcribe the content and display it nicely i've already installed next.js take it up from here give the app a modern and sleek look so this is the prompt that i give and now byte rover was installed or let's say configured and for the same reason if i head over to this memory section right here and here we already have all that memory updated so let me go ahead and open it up so it says voice transcription app for next.js features two main architectures originally client side i mean you can find all these details in here and every time you give a new prompt to the AI, all the changes that it makes and everything is updated in real time and everything will be stored in this memory uh, space right here and you can find all that, all right? And next up, I went ahead and gave another prompt and it says, build an about page for the app at the slash about route and include important information about the app. Now it actually went ahead and called the byte rover retrieve knowledge MCP tool and analyzed the content in our memory and then used the data from that all right, so it made use of the memory and referred to the, all the data and then created the perfect about us page and then it again called the byte rover stored knowledge so whatever stuff that the ai did for creating this part right here or the page or whatever feature or bug fixes or whatever that is and then it created another one in here so as you can see it says comprehensive about page in next.js react and it has mentioned pretty much everything that it did so whatever be the changes or let's say whatever be the messages that you send to let's say cursor is automatically being captured and byte rover creates a memory space and stores everything in here and now every time you use cursor cursor ai agent will refer to this memory source and understand the code base what are we up to how is the project structure what are the bug fixes that we have fixed so far and it pretty much gets everything right so it makes the life of the ai a lot easier and then it refers to the content and then start working on the same and that is how it works so if i head over to the about page i should already have that about page so there you go this right here is the about page that ai has created and next up maybe i can go ahead and give another message so this time around i'll go ahead and say create a sleek looking landing page for our app in the root that is slash and move the app main app to the slash app route okay and now as soon as i hit enter watch this so it says i'll help you create a sleek landing page and reorganize the app structure but it says first let me retrieve any relevant knowledge and examine the current structure and it is making a call to the byte rover retrieve knowledge mcp tool and now all i gotta do is to click on this option that says run tool so let's wait and now what is happening is that the ai agent is referring to the memory space or this memory section right here and is analyzing all the content it has saved so that the ai will get more context as to how to build the app or it can get anything useful for building this particular feature and then take it up from there so let's wait all right so seems like the ai is done creating a new landing page for our app and also moved the core app to the slash app route as you can see 404 done and now it is again calling the byte rover stored knowledge uh, mcp tool and as soon as i click on this run tool section whatever be that changes or everything that the ai did in this particular chat will be logged and stored in the memory space right here which you can access in a couple of seconds so let's wait for it and the mcp tool call is successful and now all right it is giving us a, a summary of what exactly the ai agent did and now I'll click on accept all and now if i head back to the app and head over to the main page as you can see here we have a landing page for the app and again our app is now in the slash app directory and still we also have the about page and now if i head over to byte rover again as you can see the ai has went ahead and stored all the important information knowledge context everything else in this space right here and we can find that in here so it says next.js root restructuring implemented the main application is moved to a sub route with a new comprehensive visually distinct landing page the root and the about page now at about so that is there and now also moving the app to the slash app root and you can find the information in here and if you click on this expand button you can find a detailed log as to what the ai did so here we have yet another one sleek glass morphism inspired landing page and again this one right here is the updation on links on the secondary page now whatever be the changes that i make in 
cursor everything is logged and saved and synced into my memory space and next up let's just say i want to add another api route within my project where we actually use open ai api to transcribe the content so in this case i'll just go ahead and open a new chat and i can go ahead and say please create a new api route for implementing voice transcription using open ai api and i just went ahead and opened up the open ai documentation page right here and so that is speech to text and i copied the entire content and now i'll paste the same in here yeah just like that and now i'll go ahead and hit enter and now what happens is that the ai will refer to the current memory that we have in here so i can click on run tool and it will analyze the entire content and goes ahead and implement and create a new api route which uses open ai and then store and log all that in the memory space right here so each and every changes that i make to my app is now logged and now the ai will have a better time understanding the project architecture the structure the changes that we have made the services that we use the design language like pretty much everything is logged and now every time you open a new cursor project you will find a new file called as bytrover rules.mdc so basically it mentions that it has to uh, retrieve and store knowledge before and after and if i go to settings and if i move to tools and integrations i can find the byte rover mcp so these two are the tools right here and this is what cursor is making use of to refer to the memory space to retrieve and store the knowledge now let's see so it is asking us the permission to install open ai package so i'll go ahead and install the same so it is now creating the root.ts file for the new api route now it is creating a new transcription.ts file as well now another one called as transcription upload.tsx and next up i'll click on this open terminal button to start the development server so that the ai can check the implementation all right run so seems like we have some error in here and now the ai is trying to fix the same and now pretty much everything works and after implementing the new open ai powered api route it is now calling the byte rover store knowledge mcp tool to document and store all the context and every changes it has made like documenting everything and storing the same to this memory section right here within byte rover so let's wait and now that part is also done and I'll click on accept all and now as you can see when i visit the memory space in byte rover the new one is logged in here and now it says nextjs api route for voice transcription using open ai and now it has actually put every details in here the api specifications the endpoint the log and everything that the ai did is logged in here right and next time onwards when i go ahead and ask some changes to be made based on this api route or say create a ui for this one the byte rover i mean the ai agent will refer to this byte rover memory and then update its context and start working on it and this way you can reduce the errors or let's say hallucinations and also make sure that the ai has pretty much every details that it needs in its context so it will be less error prone so that is the whole idea here and now yet another cool thing here is that all these memories that are stored in the memories workspace right here is accessible not just to you but your entire team too so if you're working as a team and you have multiple people working in the same project all you got to do is to head over to the dashboard and find the project that you're working on for example let's say this one right here and now i can click on this button right here to open settings and head over to the member section and now i can invite all the people within the same team working on the same project and add them into the organization and pretty much everyone will have access to this memories like all the memories so whatever be the changes that every person within your team makes everything is logged in centralized place right here and when anyone makes any changes or asks the ai to do something the ai agent can refer to the memory space or workspace here and then make changes accordingly so that is yet another cool thing so even if you work as a team pretty much everyone within the team will have access to the same memory workspace and the ai agents can refer to it so that it knows pretty much everything about the project even if other people make any changes to it so that is the incredible part so i hope you guys understand how this whole byte rover thing works and how adding a self-improving memory layer between you and your ai agent that is cursor wins or whatever that is can significantly improve the coding experience so to quickly get started all you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below head over to bytrover.dev and you can simply sign up for a new account and use it right away and now yet other interesting thing is that they do have a free plan where you can get up to 500 monthly retrieval create unlimited memory and again unlimited users so if you want to try it out and take it for a spin you can simply go ahead and sign up for free and start using it right away 
So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you guys found this video useful. If yes, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.